and we're back. We are going to talk Hogwarts Legacy, right? Can we do that? I think we can. I think I can get through this. Let's let's see. I've got some questions. Click a lick a lot. All right. Thank you for watching anything that I'm putting out. I've only been in this realm for 30 days. OK, 30 days, over 100 videos out. And I appreciate every subscriber that I get, give or take what game you're following me for or subscribe for. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hit the like button. Let's go for three likes and let's get into it. We're talking about and I'm not going to say the Harry Potter game, though you just it's synonymous. You can't not mention one with the other. But Hogwarts Legacy is a game that is going to come out in 2021. So I want to say maybe the first half of next year. I actually did some research. I actually said, you know what? Let me click a bunch of websites and find out what they know about this game because I am interested in this game, though I probably shouldn't be because I'm, I believe I'm older than the uh, demographic they're selling to. But like I've said in previous videos, I read all the books as a kid, or at least all the main books. I watched all the movies at least twice, and I rep Ravenclaw. Now, I got caught up into the Harry Potter craze, just like the rest of everybody else at the time. And though I might have outgrown that, a game is a game, right? And you can be interested regardless of who it's supposed to be selling to. Um, so here's my casual take on this game. Some of this information may be new to you. Some of it won't, but it's going to help someone. I can hope. I can only hope. So let's get into it. Now, this game will be on virtually every system, to my knowledge. It's supposed to be PC, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X. Uh, it's, it's all the systems. It's supposed to be, this is a major release. This is not an exclusive to PlayStation 5, which a lot of people, including myself, thought that. But if you just go to the website, you can see a lot of the information that's on there. And it's supposed to be a general launch in 2021 on multiple platforms. So that's good to hear. It will not have multiplayer. Okay, this game will not have multiplayer. It is a role playing game, but it is not a massive online role playing game. Okay, it is a single player experience. Now, playing online, co oping with your friends, doing raids, those are all rumors as of right now. Maybe later on in the future, similar to how Cyberpunk is going to add multiplayer, maybe two years, I think it's two years, uh, 2022, Cyberpunk 2077, say that 15 times fast, is supposed to have multiplayer. So unless something like that happens for this game, it's probably not likely. And even with that being the case, the age demographic would be very interesting to, you know, put that together online. But that's another conversation that I, I assure you I will never have. Now, this game takes place in the 1800s. So with it being placed in the 1800s, it takes out the Harry Potter crew that we know. There's no Harry Potter. There's n the twins aren't there. Ron Weasley isn't there. Shout out to my boy, Ron Weasley. They're not there. This takes place in the 1800s. This is going to be very interesting because from what I'm hearing or what I'm reading, they have an opportunity to plug some holes in the series as far as the book and anything that's come after the book. Like there's certain games that's come out, there are um, Fantastic Beasts, other movies that branched off. So they have an opportunity to close that hole in the plot. Now, what am I talking about? I'm talking about if you've ever watched any of the uh, DC comic book movies or Marvel comic movies or even Star Wars where you know your stuff, right? You know your favorite characters in the lore, and then you watch it on the big screen or you play it in a game and there's issues with it. We don't know if they they plug this or they keep it going. Things like time travel. They don't, they don't conversate that, again, pretty early on on the release of the information, even though the game is, in my opinion, right around the corner. Now, with the plot holes, I have to ask, is this a money grab? Or is this a game that's supposed to do right by the Harry Potter universe, by the the universe that I guess this all was built on? What I mean by that is, 
as someone who's casually played Harry Potter games, put in the comment a good Harry Potter game. Because other than maybe Legos, there isn't a good Harry Potter game. Like I mentioned in a previous video, the AR game that was made by the same developmental crew that brought you Pokemon Go came too little too late when the AR craze was gone. And that game, if you're still playing it, big ups to you. Though I did say what I like and I did in that video. So I don't know if they're just doing this because said or, hey, look, we're going to make things right. There's going to be a legit Harry Potter game, live service game. I don't want to say live service, but a game that will hold up the test of time and will do Harry Potter fans justice. Now, I've got some questions, right? Because see, I'm not supposed to be playing this game, so supposedly, right? I've read some some articles and all of them were like pointing towards like, this is your kid's upcoming game. This is your kid's upcoming game. I'm like, what about the adults, right? Like there's some games that might look childish and we end up still playing them or whatnot. So I just was like, you know what? I'll keep an eye on this game. If it interests me enough, I'll play it. But here's the questions that I thought of that I could not find an answer. Couldn't find an answer to these, right? How does this play out? Do you get to pick your origin story? Right? So again, I'm not trying to give you brand new information on the game. This is just me saying, I got some questions for the team. I believe it's Avalanche is the, the, the developing crew that's working on this game, but I have some questions like, you know, like you get, look at a game, like, um, I'm not saying it's detailed it's fable or mass effect, but do you pick what it is that puts you in one of the four houses? You know, do you make a choice while you're playing the game and it's, it, it watches what you're doing. And then from there, it puts you in the class of Ravenclaw or Gryffindorf or Hufflepuff. Like, how does that work exactly? How does the, the magic, you know, you casting a spell, how does that work exactly? Because the mobile game, the last one I remember that came out, like I said, the uh, Pokemon Go iteration type thing, it was really cool, the detail that it would go through for you to create your own wizard, especially the elements of your wand. I'm not saying necessarily the elements of the wand. I mean, like, how do you on next gen system on PC, on mobile, whatever this is on, create the spell and do it in such a way that feels fluent and feels authentic to what you're trying to do. I'm curious. And it's not something that you shouldn't, we shouldn't take lightly. If we're, again, we're talking about this game, but remember the, uh, the movie, Dr. Strange, right? I don't know if you know this, but Dr. Strange, you know how he does his, his magic tricks. And I'm not going to show any of that for copyright reasons, but he does his, his magic tricks or he opens portals or cast spells. And you see that ring that glows as he's opening everything up. Those hand gestures that he has came from a guy. And I don't remember the person's name, but it was something along the lines of this guy is a famous hand tutter, tutting or something. It's a dance technique where you move your hands and your hands do the dance motion. So you, your whole body dances and then you can make your hands dance. And this guy went viral or he was viral. He is a big player in the dancing community where he was known for this. And when they were putting this movie together, sidebar, they contacted this individual and had him come up and work with the team that produced that movie to come up with how he would cast a spell. You see the level of detail there. So I'm just curious, how do you cast a spell? Is there a skill tree? that goes into casting a spell. Does this skill tree change? And what I mean by that, there's there's good magic and there's bad magic. Sure, there's more technical stuff on the casting of spells, but like I said, I'm a casual wizard who put their wand down many years ago, okay? So if I make a choice in this game or make an action in this game, does it change where one or two things happen? Am I better at casting this type of magic because I've cast that more? Or is there a choice of types of spells that I'm doing that will, at the end of whatever mission or a certain time period, let me know, hey, look, based off the choices you made, you're a dark wizard. You're a bad guy. And then you're stuck with that, oh, man, I, no, that's not, that's not it. It can't be. That'd be pretty cool. But would it be pretty cool if it was kids playing it? Like, think about it. Like a kid sitting there saying, like, I'm going to be the best wizard ever. And they're just making choices, choices they like. And then the game tells them, you're a bad wizard. Huh? You're a dark wizard. No, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm be, I'm be just like Harry Potter. No, 
No, you're not. You're Slytherin. What? No. So <laughs> that's one of the things I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about the NPCs, right? Non-playable character. And we joke about NPCs all the time. But how are the NPCs in this game? Are they going to be helpful? Are they going to be smart? Are they going to be redundant? Because you, you remember the NPCs from games like, uh, I keep going Pokemon. Pokemon, back in the day, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, DS. You know, put in the comments which one you played it on. But anybody in the city, any of the uh, non-playable characters had information for you. And they were very helpful. Sometimes you would literally miss a step because you didn't talk to everybody on there. So I'm just curious. Are they going to help you on your quest? Are they going to be redundant? What, what, what about them is going to be impactful? Speaking of impact, Gen C, I, maybe I'm saying it right. I normally call it Gen Impact. It's the uh, open world gotcha game, RPG. Two million plus sold on mobile that people have spent their own, their own actual money. And I don't mean that in a laughing matter. They just, they enjoy the mechanics, whatever. But you can pay, you can pay to win in said game, okay? Is it like that or is it more like Elder Scrolls as far as the fighting goes, as far as the open world feel of it goes? There is gameplay that leaked, but I don't want to put that out there because I think it's wrong for the devs. I think the devs should not have to answer that question of whether or not this is alpha, beta, or whatever. We don't know. But that's a question. I mean, is it a money grab? Is this a game that's going to restore faith in people who like the Harry Potter games and that universe and they want to interact with it in a way you can't do in a book or a movie, right? And what I mean by money grab, and I'm not trying to be rude or disrespectful to people who put this game together in the studio, I'm saying, remember a game, I might have already said this, I'm not sure, remember a game where, like, a good game for Harry Potter other than the Lego game? You don't see it, so I'm a little skeptical for it. I don't, I mean my kids are like, Hey, they're, they're, they're looking at it. Like, mm, it might be something I play. Maybe it won't. And then my last question, let me finish this up. Cause it's pretty long, but I think it's long because other than me rambling and enjoying the talk, it's for the fact that I probably won't do another video on this game. I'm pretty sure I won't do another video on this game unless it, it literally just, there's something about it that grabs my attention right before launch, because I just, I, I don't know. I don't know if I fit into what this game is saying to me. Is it calling out to me? So anyways, here's my questions or more questions. Final question. The creator wizard. That sounds weird just to say creator wizard. You can't have a game like this, right? In the 1800s, starting everything off, especially with everything that we know, the four houses and whatnot. Do you, right? There's got to be a creator wizard. How detailed is this creator wizard? What are you allowed to pick? Are you allowed to pick ages? Because if you listen to the video, I make a joke about one of the uh, the wizards looking like they're 35, 37 years old. But what, I mean, how does that work exactly? If I'm playing the game or an older woman's playing the game, can they make themselves of their actual age? Because when I play UFC, I make my old overweight self and put in the game just because. I'm curious, like, how do you do it? Do you pick the voice? Do you pick your backstory? what you like and what you don't like. And, and do those choices affect the outcome of your experience? And I think with that, that changes replay value. Now, if you're telling me that if you can play the game and do stuff differently, each time changes what happens, that'd be awesome. Now you can do another character. Now you can play the game again. Now you can turn it off and redo it again, whatever the case is. I'm just curious. Those are questions I had. I'm done now. So thank you for listening to my TED talk on the Harry Potter game. No, I'm joking. Hogwarts Legacy. I am intrigued about this game. I'm going to keep an eye on it, but I am. There's a lot of other people out here on YouTube and Twitch who are probably, I'm not probably 100% way better at talking about this than this old wizard. So till next time, click a lick a lot.